What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back to discuss Detroit Lions training camp. The final day of practice this week is now in the notepad as we get prepared for our home opener on Friday against the Buffalo Bills. And we have some takeaways. Now, today was definitely toned down in terms of practice, and it was going to actually end early, but I don't think it technically ended early because the weather kind of like passed us, which was pretty darn awesome. But at the same time, it did kind of end early. Like it ended early. But I don't think it was because of weather, if, if you know what I'm saying. But then it was definitely toned down in practice. However, it was still one of the best Lions experiences I've ever had. So let's get it started. Up, we're going to bite a kneecap off, and we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you before... Before long, we're the, going to be the last one standing. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And we have a lot of things to discuss today for Lions training camp. Whether that's what happened on the field, the roster moves that the Lions made, and also what happened off the field today. So we got a lot of things to dive into. I'm excited to do this video because I'm really just, I'm really just so pumped for Friday. Like I'm ready to get this thing started. Dan Campbell said, "Hey, look, the starters are going to play about the first quarter." Now we know some guys probably won't be out there. Like I'm thinking, Hawkinson may not be there. Swift may not be out there. Brockers probably won't be out there but we know there's gonna be a lot of starters playing Friday which should be pretty awesome just to get back in the flow of things and that's one of the reasons they decided to tone it down today he said we got to get our bodies back that way we can play on Friday so hopefully we get some good news there with guys like Jamar Jefferson we have some news but hopefully we get some good news maybe surprise us in plays I'm not expecting it but I'm just saying my hope is out there that that is the case. We also have good news from guys like Derek Barnes, and we're going to get to the full injury report in a second, but we have good news from guys like Derek Barnes who said he will participate on Friday, and I know there's a lot of Derek Barnes fans out there. We haven't heard a ton from him through training camp because he's missed a lot of time, but he's going to play on Friday, so we're going to get to see him on the national stage. That's going to be awesome as well. So a lot of excitement coming for sure, and today was the last day of practice and uh, definitely exceeded my expectations because off the field is pretty darn awesome. I got to meet some that I never thought I would get to meet, which was really, really cool. But I first got to give a shout out to all you guys that say what's up. And you guys really make this channel go. You make it what it is. So it's pretty nice to get to meet you guys in person. Try to put a name to a face. Now, look, I'm terrible with names, so I'm going to mess it up. All right. Some of you guys, I've met you before and I didn't know who you were at first. And I'm like, oh, snap, that's who you are. I'm just bad. All right. I'm not only bad at remembering names, I'm also bad at pronouncing names. And you guys know that you guys have seen a lot of my videos. Well, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you know, pronouncing names is definitely not my strong suit. But anyways, today was a pretty darn cool day. So first off, I met up with Michael Banks. If you don't know who Michael Banks is in the Ford Hall of Fans. OK, we got the autograph picture here. This was the first time I met him it was last year. Where was this? I don't think it was at the family. I don't know where it was, actually. It might have been at the family fest like two years ago or something. Either way, met Michael Banks then, and I got to meet him again today because I missed him on Saturday. And uh, he kind of took me around a little bit, and we got to see a lot of cool people, which was pretty darn awesome. Shout out to Michael Banks and his family. I got some pictures with those guys. I, think I get hyped about the Lions. Just try talking to Michael Banks, okay? This dude is pumped all the time, and I absolutely love it. Like, I can really feed and vibe off of that energy that he gives off with the Lions. I love it. I absolutely love it. So shout out to him because he kind of took me around. We went under this tent and it was nice under there. I can't lie. Woo, that thing was nice. But then we got to meet some people. So I want to give a thank you to Michael Banks. We're definitely going to have to hook up again, whether that's next week, during the season, something. We're going to have to figure something out. We'll be in touch for sure if you're watching this video. Shout out to you. I appreciate it, man. I just wanted to give that shout out to Michael Banks and his family. Awesome family. Thank you for taking me around because it was pretty cool to get to meet all these people. And like I said, I wouldn't have got to meet all these people is it, if it wasn't for you. Get to talk to some of the Lions media staff was, was pretty darn awesome idea. I definitely did not expect that to happen today. Just an awesome opportunity. Secure you know working there that was pretty awesome and I have some pictures I thought I would at least share with you guys this one is with Penny Sewell's mom like when are you gonna get an opportunity to take a picture with Sewell's mom the Lions top pick this year so that was pretty sweet okay like I was not expecting that I definitely didn't wake up this morning hey think I'm gonna meet Penny Sewell's mom at practice what later we got to see Herman Moore and uh, I've never seen her more. In I don't know if I've ever seen her more in person, but like that first initial reaction was, dang, he is a tall dude. We're talking about a Lions legend. I also got to meet Jerry Goff's dad, his trainer. I was like, this is, I mean, this is cool. Like, I wake up this morning thinking that this was going to happen. Some great people around Jared Goff. I mean, to meet, you know, his trainer and his parents, you know, all of that. I mean, it's just not something that you would expect. To meet Goff's family. And I guess for that matter, also to meet Sewell's family. I mean, that's, I feel like I'm taking an L because I don't even know how to explain it, but it was just, 
too cool. It was just surreal. I mean, it's it's pretty darn amazing. Those are just, they're great people. You know, when they started walking over, so they watched my stuff, I was like, this is this is crazy. I, am I, is this real? For real, is this real? Like, what, what's going on right now? Everybody that I met today, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, it was an honor to meet all of you, I and mean, that was awesome. It, it was a it was a pretty good day, I gotta say. Shout out to Michael Banks and his family. We're gonna be rocking that picture behind me for sure. But now let's get into some of this training camp talk, okay? We got a couple things to dive into here. We have the injury report, of course, but we also have some roster news as well, and then some takeaways from today's toned down practice. So it's, it's a little bit less than usual, but there are still some things to discuss. So let's talk about this roster move first. Earlier today, the Detroit Lions released running back Michael Warren of the second. I believe this well, this may not have happened before. Yeah, I think this did pra happen before practice. Michael Warren the second, because I don't remember seeing him on the field for the Lions in today's training camp. This is the former running back out of Cincinnati. He's been in the league. This is going into his second year now. We did the video comparing him to Dedrick Mills, and that kind of felt like his competition. Sure, there's other guys like Jason Cabinda, things like that, but that, that felt like his competition, more of a power runner. Definitely has a lot of size. Still a young player that was super talented back in college, and I'm sure he'll land with some team. So I'll be keeping an eye on it. I'll be rooting for him and uh, go out there and ball you know go do your thing and also i appreciate the, the autograph football that that is pretty awesome so wishing him the best of luck for sure going forward and Dedrick mills has had a pretty strong camp that group we've had guys step up in terms of jamar jefferson Dedrick mills heck even godwin started to come along a little bit you know we still seen some issues like fumbles drops things like that but he is coming along. Definitely going to be looking out for Michael Warren the second and where he goes. He was unfortunately dealing with an injury with the Lions, which definitely stinks. And when you look at our running back group right now, well, it doesn't seem like there's anything super serious here. There are a couple guys that have been a little dinged up, which means there's a good chance maybe we don't see him on Friday. So the Lions went out and signed another running back today. Now, I can't guarantee that we'll see this guy on Friday because it's not a lot of turnaround time to get on the field. So there's still a chance that we don't see him. Maybe we do. I don't know how quickly they can get him acclimated and ready to go. For example, Nico Roby Coleman, he hasn't really been going through team drills, and he's been here for a few days already. He kind of just works at the end of practice by himself, which shout out to Nico Roby Coleman. That's one thing that I noted after practice for a while, he was out there grinding by himself. No one out there with him, just putting in some work. I don't know how quickly they can get him acclimated, so I'm not sure if we're going to get to see him on Friday or not. We'll see. But the Lions have signed running back Javon Leak. All right, this is the former Maryland running back that was in the league last season. He was picked up by the New York Giants. He wasn't there very long, though. And then he went to the Washington football team where he was activated for a week 14 game. He then signed to a futures contract, but has recently been released only two days ago. Yeah, he hasn't been on the, he hasn't been available that long. And Javon Leak has, like, no tread on the tires whatsoever. I mean, this guy didn't get that many carries back in college, but when he did... He definitely made the most of it. This is a player that gives you some kick return ability, but also a big play ability. Now, when you look at his relative athletic score and you look at some of those numbers, like the 4 6 5, 40, you know, the 1.7 second 10 yard split, you're thinking to yourself, man, that's not that good. Yeah, his speed score wasn't great. I actually love this quote that I found from Javon Leak. He said this, the game film is more accurate indication of my speed. I love that. That's that's a heck of a quote there because he knows those numbers aren't great. Those aren't fantastic. And he went undrafted, you know, in that 2020 draft. But I love that quote, you know, straight up. Hey, watch my film. All right. If you really want to get a good indication, watch the film. And we know the numbers, you know, Brad Holmes would like look at the numbers, but they also got to trust the film as well. There's definitely two sides of it to figure out what was going on there. But he does look much quicker than that. I was kind of surprised to look at his RAS score and see how low it was after watching some of his film. I was like, really? That's That doesn't seem right. He looked a lot faster than that. But he does have solid explosion from these numbers in terms of his vertical jump, his broad jump. You can see he has solid size as well. He was coming out of the draft at 206. He's weighing in at 215 now, which means he probably bulked up a little bit. Back to college, this is a player that was in a, in a room with multiple running backs. I mean, you're talking about Anthony McFarland that came out the same year in the draft that he did. So, you know, there was a lot of talent in that running back room, which meant that he didn't get tons of carries. His junior season, he had got over 100 carries, which was nice. And he was fantastic on those 100 carries. But every single year in college, you'll notice is that even though he didn't get a lot of touches, when he did get his touches, he was explosive. He made big plays. One stat that stuck out to me is that seven of the 12 games that he played in, in his junior season, his final year in college, seven of those 12 games, he had at least a 30-yard run. All right, now we're talking about playing in the Big Ten. This is one of the best conferences in football. I thought that was really impressive considering that he's just cracking 100 attempts. He averaged 7.2 yards per carry for 736 yards and eight touchdowns. 
He led the team in touchdowns in his sophomore season with seven, where he averaged 9.1 yards per carry, just over 300 yards because his attempts were only 34. And then you look at his freshman year, only nine attempts, he still went for 99 yards. Every time he touches the ball, it seems like something big can happen. That's just the kind of player he is. And, you know, we see maybe a little more big plays at the college level, but the case is he's a big play threat. He's a walking big play threat. And we've seen that on kick returns as well. Multiple kick return touchdowns in his college career because we haven't seen him in the NFL. This is why I'm going back to college. And his average every year it improved. His final year, he averaged nearly 27 yards of kick return. Now, right now, the number one punt returner is Khalif Raymond. I took that note today. Darius Jennings was on punt coverage, but Raymond was getting the reps catching it. And by the way, Jack Fox has looked really good these last couple days. Today was incredible. Constantly punting the football inside the 20. I mean, it just seemed effortless for him. So I'm super excited to see what Jack Fox comes back with this season. We're talking about a pro bowler last year. Kind of just came out of nowhere. Took us all by surprise. And he's looked pretty good the last couple of days. So that's awesome. I mean, the Lions Lions don't even have punter competition because they're like, hey, that's that's the dude. We, we know that's the dude going forward. And he looked good again today. That's not to say that this signing of Javon Leak will become the kick returner. But there's potential here because he has some huge plays. He also has some bad plays in terms of kick returns, but the numbers are solid. And uh, when you watch some of the film, I mean, I didn't even know he had kick returns in some of these games. And you just watch and he just explodes. He can read the defense very quickly on the fly. You know, he can keep running playing at full speed and read the defense and react to it. And I think you see that show up in kick returns because you can't really slow down in kick returns, right? Everybody's going at full speed. They're coming at you. You're going forward. His ability to read the defense on the fly and adjust to it. He's a very loose player. You know, he's kind of slippery as well. Is one of the things that sticks out also as a running back. But he really reads things quickly. And you see it on those kick returns. So there's, there's potential here because there's a lot of ability and there's some huge plays in his past as a kick returner. However, from watching his film, going back, checking it out and uh, you know watching him play in some games Ohio State Michigan Syracuse just, just a few games specifically from that junior season I do have a few takeaways as I said he quick he's quick to read the defense that's something that stuck out to me for sure uh, there are some times where he's a little hesitant but it doesn't seem to be because he's not reading the defense it's because there's nowhere to go with the football I mean we're talking about an offense that didn't have much of a passing threat Maryland completed 50 percent of their passes in his final year Maryland they haven't been great. I'm just going to be honest. They haven't been great, right? We're, we're, be, we're all being honest here. Like I said, he's a big play threat. Every time he touches the football, he can make a big play. And we got a couple of those. In a way, that reminds me of Jamar Jefferson. Because Jamar isn't the fastest, isn't the most explosive. But he is a big play threat consistently. And a lot of it stems from his ability to read things quickly. Read on the fly. Adjust on the fly. But also contact balance. That's a huge thing that stuck out to me here with Javon Leak. His contact balance is pretty darn good. All right, we're not talking about a sledgehammer that you put in between the tackles and he's going to run over people. He's not really like that. But in space, if guys aren't wrapping up, he's going to consistently bounce off of those tackles. I I first noticed it against Ohio State when he was just, you know, he's picking up yards after the after contact consistently. But if you don't wrap up, if you just kind of heave your body at him, he's going to keep running. And that's something that really stuck out. Now, he is not afraid to run between the tackles. He definitely will. But he's not, like I said, he's not like a big power running back. And the Lions really don't need that. Jamal brings that a little bit more. We've seen it specifically between the tackles. He's had a lot of success with Anthony Lynn. Uh, we've also seen, you know, what Jason Cabinda could do at his size. And they've been giving him some carries as well. So he could be a little bit of that bowling ball. And, uh, you know, that's maybe part of the reason that the Detroit Lions went the way they did, releasing a guy like Michael Warren in a second. And also, you have a guy like Dedrick Mills that brings you some size as well. So, He's not really a bowling ball, but he can run between the tackles. And to me, he seems like a one-cut type of runner. Like, he wants to get upfield quick. He wants to get north and south as fast as possible. A lot of running backs, when they're not the fastest in terms of edge speed, the good ones, they understand that. And they make that first cut they can, and they get upfield. He's built for a scheme like this. He played a lot of spread sets with Maryland, which makes sense. A zone-wide rushing scheme. So I, I think he would fit schematically with the Lions here. He just, he kind of gives us an interesting back. Because there really isn't receptions on his resume. There really wasn't many opportunities to catch passes so there's not a lot there that's kind of like okay I don't know what we're gonna get in terms of pass catcher in terms of pass blocking didn't get a lot of reps of that either so you're not really sure what you're getting in those two areas we know for Jamar that was an area that he had to work on was those two because pass catching we didn't see it a ton and pass blocking he was a little bit like this so that's an area that he's been really working on this I'm not really sure what we're gonna get from Javon Leak he can make himself skinny to get through gaps in between the tackles I've seen that with Jamar as well I guess there are some similarities here to a guy like Jamar Jefferson so so maybe in, at first glance, I didn't really see that, but I guess there are. So it's important to mention that, no, he never became really the top running back with Maryland. That was kind of Anthony McFarland. And McFarland last season with the Steelers averaged 3.4 yards a carry. Didn't play a ton, but also in college, McFarland averaged less than 6 yards per carry in his final season compared to the 7.2 
seven point i mean that's a ton and it's over 100 attempts so it's not like it was like hey you got 20 carries so impressive that i put it top 10 in college football i believe it ranked him at fifth in college football first in the big 10 of course i can't guarantee we'll see him on friday but if we do look out for him for sure let's be look at statistics how many rushing touchdowns he has i mean leading your team in rushing touchdowns when you have 34 attempts like is that is that normal 34 attempts and you led your team in touchdowns how does that even happen he's also a goal line threat he's a goal line presence it's because he's got good contact balance and he's not like he's not trying to be flashy he's not trying to go out there and you know oh i gotta juke everybody out. i gotta get to the edge like no he sees the cut and he gets up field as fast as he can but speaking of jamar jefferson we got to talk about this injury report for sure and talk about who's out there what are we looking at Heading into this week one preseason game. I mean, I can't believe we're, we're saying that. I, I'm just excited saying that out loud. So as I say, it was a pretty light practice today. So certain guys, you know, maybe they were out there and, you know, they had their pads on and they were ready to go. But at the same time, it was super light. So it was kind of tough to judge where players are really at. So we'll really have to wait until the Lions put like an injury report out or some Dan Campbell updates or, or something like that to figure out for sure where some of these guys are at. But there are, there is some good news. I would say it's actually pretty good news today, specifically for the injury report. Let's start off at the top. Michael Warren, of course, as I said, he was released. He was dealing with an injury, wishing him the best of luck. Terrell Crosby still remains out with the grade one hamstring. I think it's something the Lions are just being very careful with. And look, Terrell Crosby, you know what you're going to get out of Terrell. Like, that, that's just the case. And compared to all of our backup offensive linemen, who I think have improved the last couple of days where they were they were kind of getting smoked by the defensive line, but Terrell Crosby, he can play all over the offensive line, and you know what you're going to get. Right, He's a very reliable player. He has that starting experience from last season. There was a thought he could start this year, right? So it's nice to have a piece like Terrell Crosby. Probably won't see him on Friday, but he remains out with a grade one hamstring. So hopefully nothing too serious there. Levi, what was going on with Levi? Where's that? What's going on with Levi? Well, Levi's out apparently with some back tightness, according to Dan Campbell. Okay, that does not sound good. It doesn't sound super serious, which is good. It sounds like something that just needs rest, though. Like something that needs, I don't know, ice now, heat later. Ice now. Later. So don't expect him to play on Friday either, unfortunately. John Penasini remains out, and now they have went out and they got P.J. Johnson. We know about his big body, and uh, P.J. looks like he, he's going to fit pretty well here. I'm excited for P.J. He's already involved. You know, he's going out to the sides, giving out autographs, but he looks like he's going to fit well. You, you kind of need that run-stuffing nose. He's going to bring that at 30, 335, but he also has the ability to get into backfield. I mean, that wasn't really brought out of him here, and plus we didn't get to see him with the Lions because he was cut. So anyways, I'm glad he's back, and the Lions are going to need that. We're probably going to see him on Friday. Oh, here's the big one, T.J. Hawkinson. Everybody wants to know what's going on with Hawk because, you know, yesterday – he got bumped. I think he ran into Jeff Okuda, and, uh, you know, he kind of came out after that. Okuda came back in. He stayed out. What's going on with TJ Hawkinson? Well, apparently he's dealing with a minor injury, according to Dan Campbell. Now, it was no participation today. He went out there. He had a mask on. And I, I kind of noticed, like, when guys come out with a mask on, that means they're probably not participating. He had a mask on. He was wearing pants, not even shorts. He did have his jersey on. He had his hair pulled up. So I'm thinking we probably won't see him on Friday either, which is going to give us an opportunity to see a lot more of the Alizé Max, the Charlie Tomlapow, you know, the Darren Fells maybe even, you know, that battle, the Brock Wright. So there's a really good battle. Even Alizé Mack touched on it for that third string tight end position, really. Uh, but don't expect TJ Hawkins to play. But the good thing is, is that it's minor, right? You don't want to hear anything serious. And, and we didn't hear that. Corn Elder, he's been out, you know, since Friday. Lines went out, got Nick Roby Coleman. As I said, he was working after practice all alone. He looked kind of lonely out there, but he was, he was putting in work, so shout out to him. Also, Deshaun Hand, we know that he had the injury. We talked about it yesterday. It was like, oh, this is just terrible luck. But again, according to Dan Campbell, this is a minor injury. So hopefully nothing too serious for these guys. Don't expect to see him on Friday, though. Even though he's been balling, I wish we would, but don't expect to see him on Friday. Nick Williams, he's also on the COVID list, as you guys can see. So yeah, we're missing some defensive linemen. We know about this, but it's going to give other guys a chance to step up. And go out there and make plays. We're talking about Miles Brown, PJ Johnson. You know, some of these dudes, they get an opportunity to go on the field and make some plays. I don't expect to see Brockers. So you're going to get a lot of opportunities for players that you may not even know that much about. For those defense linemen, they should be, ooh. I mean, they should be super excited to get an opportunity because they're going to get a lot of reps. Chad Hansen was out today. He was kind of doing the same thing. I, I think he was wearing, no, he might have been wearing shorts, but he was not participating today. He didn't have a helmet on. Quentin Dunbar is still out for the personal issue. We'll see what goes on there. We did get a good update a couple of days ago about that, that they were in communications with him. We'll see what happens. Quentin Sief is still out with the, the head bump that he took. We did get to see him running around a little bit, you know, with guys like Damian Riley. So he was out there running around Rashad Perriman. Those guys were running around through practice. So 
I think he's going to be all right. I just think, you know, today being as light as it was, there was really no need to try to get him out there. You know, it was just such a light day. Uh, also, Damien Riley, as I said, he's had no pads on today. He was running around. I think he also had the mask on. This is the second day I've seen that. Andre Swift, uh, he didn't go through drills today for the Lions. I take a note of it pretty early that Swift was there. Uh, that's dealing with the groin. So I, I don't expect to see him on Friday whatsoever. Uh, but it, hopefully it's not too serious. They just said his groin tightness. And I guess that brings us to Jamar Jefferson, who I was super worried about when I heard he got rolled up on and limped off. I was like, oh gosh, you guys know how pumped I am for Jamar. The good news there with Jamar Jefferson is he was out there today. In pads, did not go through team drills, but he was on the field. And that's a big deal because yesterday he wasn't even on the field. So he injury, limped off. Yesterday wasn't even there. No sign of him. Today he was there in pads, going through stretches, warm-ups, just didn't go through the team drills. So that's a huge, huge update. I'm hoping we see him on Friday, but if he's dealing with something, I know I'm being greedy because I really just want to see him. If he's dealing with something, you got to hold that guy out. We're going to see some Jamal likely this Friday. Probably not a ton, though. So it's going to get an opportunity for Godwin, you know, to get involved a little bit on a game stage. You're going to see possibly our new running back. I'm not counting on it, though. A lot of Dedrick Mills, possibly some Jessica Binda. We don't have a ton of running backs heading into this game. We really don't. So some of those guys like Godwin and Dedrick, they have an opportunity to really shine and uh, prove these coaches some things. So Rashawn Perriman was out there. He's getting back. He was running around with Ratley off to the side. But uh, he was involved a little bit in team drills. But he was back there. He's out in pads. Uh, like we said, you know, Tyrell, Brashad, they really weren't dealing with anything too serious, according to Dan Campbell, when he updated us on Saturday. He's wearing a long sleeve. I don't know how these dudes are doing it. It's hot. Tommy Kramer was limited today, the guard uh, out of Notre Dame. Kevin Strong had full participation, which is uh, good news, because recently he dealt with a little something. But he was out there with full participation, so that's pretty darn awesome. As you guys can see, Tyrell Williams is returning. He was a little bit limited, but he's coming back kind of like a Brashad Perriman. Uh, and I did see him out there lining up in the walkthroughs as a top receiver. So we're getting some good news. That's for sure when it comes to these receivers. That's awesome to hear. Jalen Reese Maven, once again, full participation from that man coming off the COVID list. Awesome. Derek Barnes, he is full and he will play. Look good. Flew around the field today again. There was really nothing crazy going on. However, he was out there. And we're going to see him on Friday. So that's pretty darn awesome. You Derek Barnes fans, you should be excited. We're going to get to see him get a lot of reps. Alex Brown, of course, was out there as well. And Michael Brockers was in pads, but it was kind of like a rest day. Some of the notes I did take away. Alizé Mack definitely seems to have a leg up for the third tight end position. And it was cool today because we saw him stick out. You know, he caught a nice corner route on the left side of the field, which was nice. We got to see him stick out a little bit without Hawkinson getting reps. And he definitely seems to have that, okay, I'm right now the third tight end. And Alizé Mack has said the competition has been good at that tight end position. And we know it's legit. We're going to see it Friday. But at least today in practice, he stuck out from the tight end room. And this is the second day in a row. Because if you go back to yesterday, let's move back, rewind. Alizé Mack, they had that touchdown target from Jared Goff, which uh, which means he's, he's getting some good reps as well. It was incomplete. But anyways, we see now for two days in a row that he's getting good reps without a Hawkinson on the field. And Campbell has stressed that he wants to see improvement quickly, specifically at that special teams unit. He, he likes his guys' ability to play special teams. We've seen a ton of special teams work. I don't know if that's like normal, but a ton of special teams work. The safety position, the uh, the number two, number two group of safeties right now seems to be C.J. Moore and Dean Marlowe. That seems to be pretty locked in. But Bobby Price looks like the fifth safety me and michael brought michael banks were talking about a little bit today bobby price looks kind of like the fifth safety a guy that they looked at as a can line up at corner and we saw it again today through walkthroughs lining up at cornerback for the lines outside against some of the guys like mckinley bobby price can be that sleeper versatile player we know how versatile he was coming out of college but he may be the guy that lions see hey certain matches price could be the go-to here i'm just saying and they would put dean marlowe and cj moore as you know the split safeties you know when they played the two shell but they would side bobby price out to man-to-man -man coverage so interesting note there he's being utilized as a very versatile safety right now so that's that's a very interesting note but i think it was cj moore today that made kind of a flying pass breakup on a slant route underneath that was impressive to see on Tim Boyle. I don't know if, the, I think this was one minute drive. I can't remember exactly, but he threw a quick slant to the right side and CJ Moore jumped down on that thing. And this is what I love about safety. There's no hesitation right now. And you're seeing it from the second unit. Moore dive, dove down and just smacked that thing away. That was pretty cool. That, Cause that's not an easy route to get down on that quickly. I mean, that's a very underneath route. Usually it's just linebackers maybe have an impact on it and a corner might make a play, but to get a safety to slide down into the box and be able to do that and they can move around post snap. Give credit to Sage Surratt. Last couple of days he's made some plays stuck out to me and today i'll give him that again with the second unit he got targeted two or three times on one drive 
They went to Sage multiple times. They, they threw a jump ball his way. He caught against the sideline. Sage Surratt, you know, he, he's been... He's been a guy that quarterbacks like to throw it to. That's what I've noticed. The sec unit Boyle, he likes to throw it to Sage. Even when he doesn't have a ton of separation, he likes to give him the jump ball because he has size. But he does get separation short and intermediate. Not deep, but short and intermediate, the guy can get separation. Deep balls is kind of more of a jump ball situation. But on certain matchups, he does have the size advantage, so you can take that shot. And we saw that today. He got multiple opportunities from Tim Boyle. So Sage Surratt's the guy to keep an eye on this Saturday. He would be one of my key players to focus in on because he's definitely right on the bubble. But he, he's been making some plays the last couple of days that have stuck out to me. So has A.J. Parker. The battle between A.J., Jerry Jacobs. I want to see how those guys go out there and compete on Friday as well. Like I said, the second unit, they moved the ball down the field pretty well. They got into the end zone uh, with just over a minute on the clock down by four. So it was nice to see that offense really click in rhythm today. And they weren't going against the top defense either. So keep that in mind. That was a very big factor as well. But they threw their first pass to the end zone to Darius Jennings. And that pass fell incomplete. He made a tremendous catch. He got some claps from the, from the crowd. A tremendous catch and it was cool to see that trust in Darius Jennings to throw that you know pylon fade up to a guy like that in the end zone he caught it he just landed out of bounds and then they went back right and scored a touchdown but again I can't tell who it was with like 20 seconds left I would think it was McKinley but I, I'm not exactly sure I wish I could see there was players standing in a row so I couldn't he, he never came out so I couldn't see who actually caught the football I'm sad about that one someone scored though and that's good for Tim Boyle for his confidence he definitely looks like the number two quarterback as he continues to get reps there now, the, the first string, offensively, they didn't get tons of reps, and it seemed to kind of like a fast jog, so there's not a ton of takeaways from this. Penny Sewell continues to play pretty well. Actually, Chris Burke made an interesting note that I would agree with, is that Penny Sewell's been going to a lot of different players to learn, you know, from those guys, whether that's different offensive linemen or even the defender that beats him. So when he gets beat, he doesn't just stand there and be like, dang, what happened? He's like, hey, what can I do better there? How can I get in position to stop you? I like that. Sewell wants to learn. Sewell wants to learn, and he's a very vocal player, but he's, a, he's definitely a young leader. You could tell that he's very NFL ready in terms of the mindset side of it. And I didn't necessarily know about that. You don't know about that coming out of the draft, but you can see it on the field. We've been getting notes from that. So I think that's a big deal. But there was one pass that Jared Goff rolled out through to the right side, a little out route. And I think it was picked off by Okuda. I don't know if he was in bounds or not, and I won't headline it. Okuda gets a pick. But he did come up with the football, and, I, and when Jared Goff threw it, he came back shaking his head like this. Rolled out through a nice little out route, but Okuda just jumped, on, jumped under and picked it off. And Okuda making plays underneath, that's huge, because la you know where you can make plays deep. But underneath, that's a game changer. And it's a lot of that explosiveness that he's getting back from being healthy. So uh, I, I know it was kind of like one of those things where, you know, I'm not actually sure if this was like something I should count or not because they weren't going really full speed. Jeff definitely jumped this, and it was a nice jump because he rolled out. He had the out route right in front of him. So it looked like an easy pitch and catch. But Okuda saw that, and he just broke on it. So that was cool to see from Jeff Okuda make a play. He's had a couple of ref rough reps last couple of days going against some studs like St. Brown. But uh, this was nice to see him bounce back and make that play. Collins continues to get rest at outside linebacker. Something I've noticed, when the Lions go to one inside linebacker sets, they'll put Alex inside, and uh, they'll put Jamie Collins at outside. Jamie, of course, has that ability with New England, with us. He's done it. Cleveland, he does it all the time. But he's more of an inside linebacker on base sets. For the most part, he's the inside linebacker. However, when they go to some of these interesting packages where they go one inside linebacker, then you see Alex Anzalone slide inside, hold down that role, and you see Jamie on the outside linebacker, probably because he has the ability to drop into flats, and he's not as fast as Alex. Alex has a lot more speed to fly around the seams. But because he can drop into flats, he could potentially cover a tight end, right? Remember his pick? His one pick came playing that outside linebacker role where he dropped, dropped on an out route and he picked it off. He has the ability to do that, and he can set the edge because of his size. Start off with Antoine Randall Ellis. He addressed the receiver position. And, of course, these are his, his guys, you know. So he, he's going to, you know, have his guys' backs. But I, I like what he said. I think He said, I think we are really good. He said the improvement has been great. I think we're going to surprise a lot of people this season. And I got to give credit to whoever you want to give it to here. Antoine Randall Ellis, very hands-on, very loud, very vocal. Uh, so you obviously have to give him credit for that. But I have to say, man, like the receiver, some of these guys, they've impressed. They have that Victor Bolton's impressed big time. Wouldn't have thought it. Definitely impressed. Khalif Raymond, he's been more than a guy that's nine receptions. Like if you see him play in training camp, you wouldn't think those are his numbers. It's an opportunity to shine and he feels that. Khalif Raymond has even discussed it. Like he knows he's going to get a chance here. So he's working to say, hey, this is my shot. This could be the best shot you ever get, Khalif. Think about it. You have a quarterback that likes to attack the middle. We've seen golf likes to go to Cleve Freeman. You got speed. You can drag. You can return punts and kicks. You have an opportunity to be our top guy there as well, which you haven't always had that ability. You have an opportunity to be such a big part of this offense. 
you could absolutely take off this year. And this could be a complete change of trajectory in your career if you ball out this season. So he's taking it like that. He's taking that approach. So I got to give credit there. But the development has been there. Sage, like Sage just come on recently. Big props to Antoine Riddell, Sage, whoever you want to give it to. He's come on recently. So some of these guys have uh, definitely impressed guys that maybe you wouldn't expect a ton out of. Tom Kennedy is continuing to make plays. I feel like he always has a strong training camp, though. But he is continuing to make plays. We've seen some good out of McKinley. But, uh, yeah, I, I like what he says here. Of course, they're his guys. But then he also brought up the fact that, hey, look, you know, we got guys that can take the top off. We have, we have guys that can go get it. And we've seen Goff a little bit more recently be a little more attacking downfield. I think there's comfortability growing there, not even just with his receivers, but just in general in the offense. Literally have some of the best guys to stretch the field you can ask for. Tyrell's great in the slot. You can do that too, but he can also stretch the field. Perriman is one of the best receivers in the National Football League at stretching the field. And he can catch the football. I know he gets he gets hate for it, but he can definitely catch. He's been catching the last few years, and uh, he's been catching at practice as well recently. And one-on-one, -on -one, he is just a nightmare. You have guys that can stretch the field all across the board. So it's going to be exciting this season. He also brought up the size. Lions got a lot of size. They have a couple smaller guys too, like your Khalees, your Victors. You need some of those. Victor for end arounds. You know, you got a guy at Khalees for returns. You need some of the smaller, you know, shifty Amon Ra St. Browns. But then you have those big boys. And I think we've seen a ton from a guy like Tyrell when they've done red zone work. That's a guy that golf likes to go to. He sees a matchup and he goes there. Of course, you have the, you have the tight ends, but specifically receivers. Sage Surratt, end zone, today from Tim Boyle. Like, practicing a lot of spread from the red zone situations where they can mix a lot of, throw a lot of different things at you. Whether that's an RPO, a handoff, a, a, a rollout play, extra rollout pass, something underneath. He can take a one-on-one -on -one jump ball to Tyrell, to the pylon. Like, they've shown a lot of that versatility. So I, I, I like what Antoine Randall L said here. I think that you probably have to give credit to simply the players and, you know, their mentality to say, hey, I want to go ball out. Like Khalif, but Khalif, St. Brown, Tom Kennedy, these three guys, they talk about they're there after practice. These three guys stayed after practice today and caught punts. I mean, practice is over probably like 20 minutes, caught punts. Then Tom Kennedy left, Khalif, I'm going to Ross St. Brown over on the Ducks machine. I mean, you got to give them credit because... That's the focus they're putting. Michael Roby Coleman talked about joining the Detroit Lions. And, you know, he, like a lot of other players, have said the same thing. I kind of joined here because of the people. Like, he felt like it was right. He wanted to work with Aubrey Pleasant. He brought up Aubrey specifically and Brad Holmes. And look, I, this is a part to be a part of building something special. Not just go win games, but win games big. Like, like win a lot of games, okay? That's what he's talking about. Nick Roby Coleman has a lot of excitement here. Uh, look, he's, like I said, he's been putting in work by himself after practice, which is cool. He's, he's definitely on the grind. You know, he's not slacking off and like, ah, you know, I'll get involved at some point. Like, no, I'm going to put in work then. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to go run drills by myself. I'm going to go hit the pads by myself. It's cool to see it after practice because he's dedicated. But he brings up Pleasant. We know how much of a stud Pleasant has been. He's like, look, you know, Pleasant's a great guy. And he's also sometimes going to get on you a little bit because he wants you to be great. Pleasant has been fantastic, but this coaching staff has stuck out. And another guy that's saying this, it's not it's not a fluke, man. Guys like our staff, and they're coming here for that reason. John Dorsey's out there every day on the field. Every day I see John Dorsey. Same spot walking around. Think of the defense real quick. Uh, Trey Flowers has been definitely getting more comfortable dropping into coverage. He's been getting some praise for that. But I think both outside linebackers have looked more comfortable there. From the beginning, which is the first day I went, you see how Romeo kind of looked lost, and it was like, oh, this does not look good. But it's definitely improved. They're getting more comfortable. They look like athletes. Someone said he looks like a defensive back dropping. That's high praise. That's super high praise. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Trey's definitely getting more comfortable. We've seen them make some plays in the flats. And you're seeing it. Lions are using it with everybody. Julian, Charles, like, the guys are getting more comfortable. You can tell what guys are starting to click onto this. And as a whole, the outside linebacker unit in terms of dropping, they're understanding. But I also think the coaches are understanding them and saying, hey, we understand, you know, your limitations. And the Lions aren't asking, you know, Trey Flowers. I've never seen Trey Flowers be asked to cover a tight end. Never seen it. He drops, but he doesn't drop as far as Julian. So they understand what kind of players they are, but you can see they're getting much more comfortable, and Trey's been getting some high praise. Uh, Antoine Rondell brought up St. Brown. He said, look, I like St. Brown in the inside. I love him in the inside, too. He said he's nasty, he's tough. He can play on the outside, and uh, we can use him outside this season. He did both in college. We know that, but he was way better on the inside. But he's like, I like him in the inside. He can read coverages. You know, so that kind of ability is where we like him. And, you know, in zone coverage, he has that ability to read, okay, is this zone coverage? No one's following me. I got to sit down. Is this man coverage? Someone with me. All right, I got to keep running. You know, he's got that. But also, I think what sticks out about St. Brown is the mentality that he brings. He's tough. He's gritty. He's mean. He gets in scuffles. But that's the kind of dude you need. I think Michael Beggs said it. Like, he's, he's shorter. That's how you got to play. And he does play like that. He plays mean. Like, you got to I think you gotta play a little bit like that, Ormil. You're going to take some hits. You're going to take some licks from some of these big linebackers that want to hit you. 
But at the same time, you got to be able to take that. You can't be afraid to get hit over the middle. You won't be able to play that role. He's not afraid at all. He attacks. He skies in the air. He gets in fights. Like, not, you know, nothing crazy. But you know what I point. He's got that scrappy mentality to play the inside. So expect to see him a lot inside this year, according to Antoine Randall L. He can play outside, which is what he says, but he does like him inside. One final note with the injury list is that uh, Austin Bryant he's so happy to be healthy i mean bryant was a stud yesterday didn't really get great notes on today because it wasn't the same but he was a stud yesterday like i said he could have counted for three sacks he was getting after it and uh you know we've seen now julian aquara today he beats he beat a left tackle to the inside we saw a quick inside move from the outside linebacker spot we're seeing some of these passers to step up the charles harris the julians the uh austin bryant's you're seeing them thrive in this role too like julian i didn't think he was big enough to be a defensive end, like in the NFL, you have to ball up a little bit. At his size and his speed being his, his quickness being his, you know, that that's really where he separates himself is he's so quick off the line. Putting him at outside linebacker, allowing him to play in a two-point stance, get a head start. That has changed, I think, big things. Same thing with Charles Harris. Same role, outside linebacker, ability to get a two-point stance and go run at it. You know, and then you see Austin Bryant, same thing there. Look at him back at Clemson. How many plays has he made in terms of getting after quarterback on the line? Probably not any. He made plays against the run, which is going to be fine because it'll help him. Need to work off the edge and work inside. Versatility. Julian said the same thing. Two point stance. Get a running head start. What he did back at Clemson. He has the ability to drop. Julian can drop. He has a pick. Austin Bryant's dropped in the past. Charles Harris can drop. This change has clearly, I think, brought in the best out of them. We're going to see it this season. Whether or not that's the case, we're seeing. I think so far in training camp, Harris has never cracked three sacks. He could do that this season. Julian Okora didn't play much last season. He can play a lot more this year. And you look at guys like Robert McCray even, but Austin Bryant hasn't been healthy. He's just so happy to be healthy. And that's been a focus of this staff as well. Make sure guys are healthy. So they're, they're doing that the best they can with these lighter practices. If guys are injured, okay, we're going we're gonna to take it slow. Their goal has been make sure guys are healthy. Challenge guys to be healthy. Diet. Keep your weight in check. It's ways to be healthy when you have your weight in check. When your weight's out of balance, you can get hurt, right? You can get really hurt. So you got to stay strong, stay in shape. Keep your weight in check. It's the second most important rule. It's the second rule for DC. Keep your weight in check. So that's been a focus, but I I'm just excited overall. We're going to talk about this more tomorrow when we get my man Rad on the show. We're going to do a little preview for Friday's kickoff against the Bills. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Shout out to everybody that I got to meet today. You guys are absolutely awesome, and I'm out.